Hello, Rebel, and welcome back to my life. How's it sounding? Are we right up in there? Yeah. Okay, so, why is it so hard to make a living as a full-time writer? Now grant you, I've done it! I am not speaking from, you know, oh, that would be nice, or from a lack of experience. I was a very successful full-time writer. In 2016 and 2017, I was making six figures. I was doing real well. I was able to move my family across state lines and put my kids in a really good school. You know, things were going great. It was fantastic. Things slowed down when BookBub's book marketing service stopped accepting independent authors and stopped accepting books that were Amazon exclusive and some, some other things changed in the author ecosystem. It was kind of annoying. Advertising also became like a really big part of being a successful author and I discovered about myself that I am unable to successfully run ads for my books and also write them. <laughs> I can do either one full-time quite well, but not both. Even after things, you know, were no longer in that brilliant heyday that they were in for a couple of years, I kept it going for a good long while. I was still making good money. You know, I, you know, most people don't need to make six figures uh, in order to maintain a, a, a nice lifestyle. I, I d still don't make actually six figures in my, in what I currently do. But eventually my wife, Megan, who was working with me full time, you know, got herself another full time day job. And eventually I did too, because I was aggressively headhunted for it, which is a nice ego boost. But okay. Okay. All right. So I still write every single day. And you can actually watch me write my books if you're interested in that over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash vlog a novel, where I vlog novels. And the thing about it is that consistency is key, right? Every single author I know who's killing it, everybody who's just going gangbusters still to this day is writing and publishing consistently. Something that I did stop doing is another reason that, you know, things sort of fell off after 2017. And right now I'm in the middle of my second of two big projects I've engaged upon in my career, which are very important to me, but possibly career suicide. The first one was a few years ago where I found that editors that I'd been working with had made literally thousands of unapproved edits in my books. Uh, and I'd published, I think, like eight books at that point. So there was there was a time period where I went back through and had to go fix all of the shit that had been broken in my books. That was fun. We call that one the Reconstruction Project, and it was... It was a disaster. It was the beginning of the end of me, you know, making a consistent full-time living as a writer. Now it's audiobooks, which I'm doing for a much better reason. Not because anything is wrong, but one, because I want audiobooks to be out there and to exist. And, and two, but also part of the reason that I want that to exist is it's an accessibility thing. If the only way somebody can listen to books for whatever reason, and it can be, it can be because uh, of, you know, uh, visual impairment, physical disability, or it can be because certain people just like can't read and absorb stories certain ways. I want the books to be available in whatever way people consume them best. But we're almost done with that. We're almost done with the very last audiobook. It's on the horizon. I can see it. And once that's done, I will be writing and publishing again consistently. And I am reasonably certain, reasonably certain that within a reasonable length of time, a couple of years or something like that, I will be able to go back to full-time writer status. There will be no more big projects, he said. You know, like a liar. No, but really, I can't think of other big projects that I would need to do. I won't need to reconstruct things and fix thousands of broken things in my books that I wasn't told about. And audiobooks will just happen as the books happen. I think that I'll just be able to, to just write and put out books. Here is the only problem, and it's a big one. That's just me. What about other people? I write in a very hacky way. That's not fishing for compliments. Uh, many of my favorite writers gleefully self-describe themselves as hacks. Dan Harmon describes his writing process as extremely hacky. And uh, that's company I'm okay being in. The first time as a teenager I heard somebody say that writing is just another job was the day the floodgates opened, the clouds parted, and light shone down from the heavens. I was like, oh, Oh, well, I can do that. This doesn't devalue writing. In fact, I think it contributes to the value of writing because you should be paid 
for doing a job. And just because something is a job doesn't mean that it can't also be fulfilling or that you and other people can't get cool things out of it. Take my current day job. I work at an art gallery where I do picture framing and canvas stretching and I make cool 3D replicas of oil paintings that I ship out to people. It's, it's complicated, but it's very cool. I really got to make a video about that one of these days. It's just a job. It is just a job. It's just a job. I go in, I do my work, I go home, I have a beer, I wake up, I do it the next day. But I work with some of the most beautiful art I've ever seen in my life, certainly that I've ever physically handled with my own two hands. And all the time I see photos or, or receive, we receive emails at the gallery from customers where the stuff that I've created makes their lives better, makes everything more beautiful. People have some really deeply personal, emotional stories about the art, stuff that I, I don't want to share for, for privacy reasons necessarily, but where we get their email and we're like, did, did we just like make a difference? I don't know that every job can be this way, but I feel like most can help. Being a bartender is just a job right? But our local bartender at my favorite spot in town has contributed to some of the best memories that I've built with my wife and friends over the last six months. It's just, she just does her thing and she's one of our favorite people. This is all a bit of a tangent. The point is, I know how to write in a way that works for me. And it is work. I just treat it like work. I show up, I do the work, and then I stop. It's extremely structured. It's not quite paint by numbers, but it's not far off from it. I have a certain list of actions. I sit down, I do that list of actions. At the end of the list of actions, I have a book. If that sounds terrible to you, if that sounds soul-sucking and awful, good, don't, don't write your books that way. Lots of people don't. I have many great friends, great writer friends who are like, I could never do that. And I look at the way that they write their books and I'm like, yeah, same. That is totally fine. I don't care how I get there because at least half of my books have reduced me to deep, bone deep, gut-wrenching, sobbing, crying while I'm working on the outline, while I'm writing them, while I'm editing them, again, while I'm narrating the audiobook. If you go watch my Twitch streams this week, again, twitch.tv slash vlog and novel, you can find in there a section where I narrated a scene and then I muted the recording and I sat on the floor of my recording booth and I cried for five minutes. That's what my stories mean to me. I love my characters. I love my stories. That's all I need from them. I never really had to get over this idea, but I think that there are some writers who need to get over the idea of hack writing because they have a way that they can write that would produce a book, but they don't do it because they, th they think there's something wrong with the process. I don't think there can be anything wrong with the process. There can only be something wrong with the product. Who cares how you got there if the book is good when you're done with it? And who cares how you got there if the book is bad? But again, that's just me. What about other people? Here's what I want legacy books to be. Legacy books, in case you're brand new here, is my small publishing house that I run. It mostly publishes my own work, full disclosure, but I have published novels and short stories by other authors. And here's what my perfect world would look like when it comes to legacy books. I want to find cool, awesome authors out there across the internet and the world. Maybe they're already self-publishing their own work. Maybe they're just fan fiction writers. Hell, maybe they're traditionally published. Point is, I can read what they write, and they're good at what they do. And they seem like they'd be a good fit for Underrealm. And I'm like, hey, do you want to write an Underrealm trilogy? It's a universe I've already created. You don't have to do any world building. You just have to do like the character work, come up with a good plot. We'll figure out how to integrate it with the broader story that's going on. We'll write three books. We'll publish them, you know, rapid fire, pocket, a pocket, a pocket. People will probably love them. I've got people who like to read Under Realm books. They will come and read your Under Realm book. And if you have fun with the process and if you like the money, then maybe we do it again in the future. Or maybe you write the one trilogy and that's it. And then you're just like, cool, that was fun. Sayonara. And if they're cool with it, then I would want to send them a $10,000 advance, and I would want to fly them close to me, set them up in a hotel room, maybe an Airbnb or something around here, and then just have them work on those books 
for a few months. We'd meet every day, we'd talk about it, we'd like sort out any issues that came up, work out the plot, work out the story, and then just send them back to their little cave to go just sit and write and pound out the words. And I'd run back here to my little cave to sit and pound out the words because of course I'd be writing my own books as well. A few months later, we've got the trilogy ready for post-production. It's ready for editing, cover design, publication, all that jazz. They can go home and do whatever they want to do. I can, you know, buckle down and start working on finishing the book and getting it out there and releasing it to people. This would work so well for me if I was the writer in this equation, right? If somebody was just like, hey Garrett, come write a thing, we're gonna give you some money and you're gonna come out here and stay with us and we're gonna work on this really intensely for a short period of time. That would work so well for me and I know because I've done it and it's so freaking awesome that I immediately was like, I want my entire life to be doing this for other people. I want to be the guy who people come to see and hang out with every day to create a book because it's so great on that end and I can't even imagine what it's gonna be like on this end. And this is one of those things where it's like, this would not work well for everyone, right? This, this is expanding beyond me, but it's not expanding to everyone. Not everyone would like this process, not everyone would enjoy this, and that's okay. For one thing, Underrealm is the most important creative thing in my life. It would not be the most important thing in other people's lives. Like, it just, I, I'm not stupid enough to think that that would be the case. I want people to come in, give the Underrealm books their all, and then move on. Even if they, even if they do write more Underrealm books, a new trilogy in the future, continue the series, or whatever, I, like, I, I want that to be a new thing. I just want it to be a project that they work on. And I want them to enjoy that project. I want them to enjoy the process. Writers can really get stuck in a rut, right? Like we can feel like we're just kind of doing the same thing or we're a little bit listless. We don't really know what we want to do and we're struggling with inspiration and whatnot. Switching it up like this, working on a new project with a new person in a new way can be deeply inspiring and fun. And you can, you can learn lessons from that that you can then go take to your own work or maybe just hanging out with another writer or other writers for a while just gets you going again and makes you, you know, it breaks you out of whatever zone you've become trapped in that's keeping you from progressing on your own work. And so then I want them to do that and go home and I want them to collect paychecks from legacy books for the rest of their lives. Not, you know, not huge. One trilogy of books is all, like in all likelihood, not gonna change somebody's life. It's not gonna set them up forever so that they never have to work or write again. I don't think that's a realistic goal. It's it's not a goal that I want. I want to keep writing, right? But but I want them to be happy. I want them to have created these books. I want them to get emails from readers who love those books. And I just want to send them money every month. Just send them a little bit of money. Here you go. Here's 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 the money. <laughs> Thought slime. Thought slime reference. Ah. And uh, as an addendum to this, uh, uh, hopefully after we've done this a few times, there's enough extra money that I could hire somebody else to actually take care of like the books and like, you know, divvying up the royalties and everything like that. Although I have gotten pretty good at doing it in the, in the time that I've been doing it. I'm pretty good at handling it solo. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Okay. So that's what I want legacy books to be. And doesn't that sound awesome? And again, if your answer to that question is no, no, that does not sound awesome. That's fine. You don't have to do that. You don't have to write books for legacy books. Nobody has to write books for legacy books. But to the people who it sounds awesome to, it's going to sound very, very awesome. And I know because I'm one of those people. To me, this sounds amazing and a dream come true. And I cannot do it. I simply do not have the money to do it. I don't have the money or the ability to make this happen. And so I have to carry on with like a simulacrum of this plan. A, a, a vague copy of facsimile trying to do what I can of the plan and the model without actually being able to do it. At one point, we had three Underrealm book series in actual full development. This is not just vague talking with people about the idea of a series or initial discussions. This is, we've got outlines. We've got drafts. We've got things that I can read that is an Underrealm story waiting to be completed. One of those turned into A Cloak of Red by Brenna Gawain. It's a fantastic book. It's deeply gay, but also softly ace. Happy Pride. It's wonderful. I love it so deeply, and you should buy it so that I can go send Brenna more money. And Brenna has gotten a lot of money off of this book. I mean, not again, it hasn't changed her life, but I've been able to send her a lot of money, and that feels really good. I don't, you know, I'd have to go do the math, um, and I don't want to necessarily spread anybody else's numbers, but I feel very confident saying that uh, she's made well above 
minimum wage for the time that she spent on this book. And she will just keep earning for the rest of her life. That ratio of how much time she spent versus how much money she's earned off of it will never go down. It will only ever continue to go up and up and up. And again, like full disclosure, 75% of the royalties of that book go to the author. That's our, that's our deal with authors. But that does mean that I have also made money off of this book. Brenna spent more time on it than I did. So she gets way more money, but like, I'll just keep getting money from this book for the rest of my life. That's cool. I like writing books for many reasons, and that is one of them. But Cloak of Red, especially, and the Tenth Kingdom, actually only just further serves to highlight the problem, because due to a variety of personal factors, Brenna hasn't been able to continue on that book series. It's It's been a while, it's been a while since that book came out, and we haven't been able to publish the second one yet. And I don't know when we will be able to, and it is agonizing. It is worse for me. And I know you, some of you might be out there and be like, oh, well, I love Cloak of Red. It's my favorite book series. I don't blame you. But you have to understand that it's so much worse for me. It is so much worse for me because I've read the outline. I've read early work on the book. I know what's going to happen in the second book. And it's so good. It's so good. And it's not out yet. And it's worse for me than it is for you. If we could just squeeze it out and pinch it off, you'd be able to see. <sighs> but we can't yet. So why is all this? Why is it so hard for me to do this individually for myself, for my own writing career, and so much harder to make it happen for other people as well? Well, because because people got to eat. You, People got to pay the bills with the money. That dream scenario from before, even if I could go out and find awesome authors and give them a $10,000 advance and fly them out to a hotel here in wine country of Oregon, not everyone could even do that. There's people with families and, and full-time jobs and responsibilities, and they've got benefits, and, 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 and. All these things make it extremely difficult to even just get started on this path, much less build up the momentum that eventually becomes into the inertia that can just sort of like pull you along through slumps or, you know, uh, hiccups in the road. Hiccups in the road. Not potholes, not bumps. Hiccups in the road. Have I mentioned that I write books? And like, if you watch the Twitch streams, again, twitch.tv slash vlog and novel. It's a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun. I'm always encouraging people to come hang out because anyway, it's a lot of fun. But you're probably aware, if you do watch the streams, that I work really hard at this. I get up every single day around 5 a.m. between 5 a.m. and 6 p.m. and I write for a few hours before I go do my day job. When the weekend rolls around, I crash hard and I sleep for I, I, until I wake up, which usually ends up being more than 12 hours because I'm catching up on all the sleep that I've missed throughout the week. By the, by the time, it's it's almost my weekend, and, and, and dear Rebel, I'm exhausted. It is grueling what I'm doing right now, and a lot of people physically cannot do it. And I am only physically and mentally able to do it because of the incredible support I get from my family. Which, again, is not a thing that everyone has. So if I can't give somebody a $10,000 advance and fly them out here to work with me on the book every day, how can I expect them to get the work done otherwise, outside of that? We got lives, man! We got stuff to do! And here's the thing. Here's, here's what it is. You want the answer to all this? This is the answer. We are not going to be able, none of us, are going to be able to individually solve a problem that is systemic. You know Animal Farm, the book? Probably the movie. They made a movie, right? Okay, but Animal Farm. You know the the horse, Boxer? A lot of us are boxers, man. Boxer's motto was, I must work harder. He got sold this idea that if every that if he specifically just worked hard enough, everyone could prosper everyone could succeed together. And to be clear, that can be true with the right social structure. A boxer was exploited by other people who preyed on his emotions, his ignorance, and his desire to help. And we are boxers, and there are pigs out there selling us a bill of goods that if we just work hard enough, we will fix all of the problems that they have created. And instead, they turn our work 
into more problems. Where did the Italian come from on that line? Why did it come from? I have no more idea than you do. I am also trapped in here with me. We get taken advantage of as creatives. We get sold on the idea that if we just work hard enough, we can overcome any barrier. Well, some of us will. <laughs> Some of us will succeed. We will overcome those barriers. And it's just enough of us that the rest of us think, I can do it too. But it has as much to do with luck as anything else. And that includes the luck of birth. If you're born into a relatively wealthy family like I was. If you're born without chronic health problems that make it even harder for you to carry on like I was. But ultimately, no matter how hard I individually work or how much of myself I pour into legacy books, I cannot single-handedly fix the fact that it is hard as hell to build a career as a writer out there in the wide world. I didn't create that problem. Literally all of humanity did. And we can only fix that. We can only make that part of it easier by changing the whole system. By, by fixing it as a people, not as a person. If we had universal basic income, I, I, I guarantee that the three Underrealm series that were in like production, not just development, in production before, would be done. And there would be other ones and I would be further along with my Underrealm books. Hell, if we just had universal healthcare, if we just had that one thing, that would have handled the hurdle that stopped one of those series from happening. Not all of them, but one series literally has not happened because we don't have universal health care. These are systemic problems. They require systemic solutions. I individually cannot solve these problems and none of us can solve them overnight. It remains to be seen whether we can solve them at all. And here's what I really want you to take away from that. If you're out there having similar struggles, keep this in mind. Keep in mind that you are facing Individual challenges, too, I'm sure, but you are facing systemic challenges as the basis for all the rest of it. And it's really important that you remember that for one specific reason. If you do not remember that, and if you do not keep that top of mind, you are going to be tempted into solutions that make the whole situation worse for yourself and everyone else. Easy example, I could seek investment capital. I could go out with a business plan and be like, you give me uh, half a million dollars and here's how I'm going to turn that into a bunch of books by a bunch of authors, big shared universe. It's all going to be awesome and it's going to make a ton of money. But getting that investment would require that business plan that was all geared around profit, making as much profit as possible for the investor, the person who was putting all the money in. And that would require exploiting writers maybe cut down their percentage so that they're not getting as much of the back end. Even though they're doing the majority of the work, we collect the majority of the money. Maybe don't give them a percentage at all. Maybe pay them more up front, but then we own that book forever. That's what a lot, a lot of companies who have tried to set up a structure like this, that's what they've done. They've made a shit ton of money off of exploitation. And yes, I am calling ghostwriting exploitation, because it kind of is. More Underrealm books would certainly happen if we did this. The audience would probably grow. I'd make, <laughs> I'd make so much more money. Holy shit. But that wouldn't fix the problem. The real problem that I'm facing, that wouldn't fix the problem. It would only put me on top of the problem. I would become the problem. The real solution is to enjoy the process right now, whatever that looks like. Enjoy the product, however it comes out and stick to your guns and work in a way that doesn't make all the problems that you face right now worse for everyone else going forward. And that is all I've got for you today, Rebel. Hey, did you know that I have a Patreon? I wouldn't blame you if you don't. I haven't made videos in months, so I haven't been able to tell you about it. You can find it at patreon.com slash Garrett B. Robinson, link in the doobly-doo for $1 a month. You get to read my books as I write them for $5 a month. You get a free ebook copy of the completed book when it's published. Newly, for $10 a month, you get a free copy of my audiobooks when they publish. I'm announcing that now and I have to figure out how to make it happen, but we're making it happen. Check out the Patreon if you're able to help me make legacy books happen. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next Friday. Bye!